So this is E19, which is forms of linear equations. We went over the slope intercept form last time. This time we're going to um, introduce the point slope formula. The point sl uh, slope formula is uh, for slope m and a point x1, y1. We use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. That's our point slope formula where x and y are just our variables in the equation and x1, y1 is a given point that we know is on that line or that we would like to be on that line. Okay, and again, m is our slope. And this is really useful when um, the point that they give you is not the y-intercept. Useful when the point given is not the y-intercept, okay? Because um, if, we, if we're given a point and it is the y-intercept, then we can just plug it straight into y equals mx plus b. We know the y-intercept, we know the slope, we plug it right in. But if the point they give us is not the y-intercept, then we can't plug it in for b, so we need this formula um, to solve. Okay, so let's look at one. On this next one, it says, uh, given the following information, find the equation of the line, write your answer in slope-intercept form, and then graph the line. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change this problem. I had a little typo. Typo. Instead of uh, 511, I want to make it negative 511. Okay, so it goes through the point negative 511 and has a slope of negative 3. So that's my M. Okay, and this point is my X1, Y1. So I want to go ahead and plug those into the formula, which says y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So I do y minus the y for my point, which is 11, is equal to my slope, which is negative 3, times x minus the x that they gave me, which is negative 5. Okay, my double negatives become positive, so I have negative 3 times the quantity x plus 5, and now I just solve it for y. I go ahead and distribute my negative 3 which gives me negative 3x minus 15, and then I move my 11 to the other side by adding. So I end up with y is equal to negative 3x minus 4. So this is the equation of my line written in slope-intercept form. That's how they wanted it written. Notice up here, slope-intercept form. Anytime you see that, you want it in y equals mx plus b form. So now that I have it that way, I'm going to graph it the same way we did in the last section. So I identify what my um, uh, y-intercept is. So again, here I look at my b, which tells me that my y-intercept is the point 0, negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that on my graph. On my y-axis, I go down to negative 4, which is here. And then I count my slope. Okay. So again, our slope was given to us, right? Here we have um, our slope is negative 3, which we can write as negative 3 over 1. Or if we want to plot points in the other direction, we can write this as 3 over negative 1. Okay. So I'm going to use negative 3 over 1 first. Okay. If my rise is negative, that means I'm going down 3. And then my run is positive 1, so I'm going forwards 1. So from this point, I'm going down 3, forwards 1 down 3, forwards 1. Or I could go in the other direction by going up 3, backwards 1. Up 3, backwards 1. Okay. And then once I have all my points, then all I have to do is connect my dots and draw a straight line. Now, I am not very good at drawing straight lines on my computer, so you'll have to use your imagination just a little bit. Okay. So not too bad. They give you a point, they give you the slope, you plug it into the formula and um, solve it for y. Okay, let's look at another one. Here, um, again, we want to get some practice with this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and say y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So my point here, um, 0, 5 is my x1, y1, and here my slope is 6, so that's my m. So I do y minus the y that they gave me, which is 5 is equal to my slope, which here is 6, times x minus the x that they gave me, which is 0. And that makes it nice, because I have y minus 5 equals 6. Now, x minus 0 is just x, and x times 6 is just 6x, right? Um, so all I have to do is move my 5 over. 
So I end up with y is equal to 6x plus 5. So that's the equation of my line and y-intercept, I'm sorry, slope-intercept uh, slope intercept form. And um, now we can go ahead and identify our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is the point 0, 5. So on my y-axis, I'm going up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I count my slope. Again, we already know that our slope was 6 which we can write as 6 over 1, or if we want to go in the opposite direction, we can change signs. So we could do negative 6 over negative 1. So I'm going to start out with positive 6 over positive 1, which means that I'm going to rise up positive 6 and run forward positive 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, forwards 1. And notice I can't go anymore or it would go off my graph. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction by going down 6, backwards 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, backwards 1. Okay, and I could do more, but three points is, is a sufficient to get a, a straight line. So then I just connect my dots. Ugh, almost missed it. Okay, and that gives me my line. So to use the point slope formula, you need to know a point and you need to know the slope. So we're going to go ahead and look at another one where one of those is not given to us. On this next one, um, Notice they're just giving us two points and they want us to find the equation of the line and again write it in slope intercept form. So when we're done, we want something that looks like y equals mx plus b. Now notice I have two points, but I don't have the slope. Okay, so I need to get the slope first. Because in order to use my formula, I need the slope and a point. I already have a point, but I don't have the slope. So to find the slope, um, I'm going to go ahead and use my slope formula. My slope formula, remember, is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus uh, x1. I don't know why I wrote a y. y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Okay, so if I use the two points they gave me, my second y value is 8 minus my first y value, which is 6, all over my second x value, which is negative 2, minus my first x value, which is 5. So I end up with 2 over negative 7, which means that my slope is negative 2 sevenths. Okay, m equals negative 2 sevenths. Now, I can go ahead and do uh, my slope intercept, I'm sorry, my point slope formula, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. All I need is one point and the slope that I just found. So I'm going to use this slope. And then I also need to pick a point. Now, it doesn't matter which point you get, um, which one you choose, you'll get the same answer. But I always choose the one that either doesn't have negatives or has smaller numbers or definitely one if it has a zero in it. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to pick 5, 6 just because it doesn't have negatives, um, less room for error. So I'm going to do y minus the y of the point that I chose, which is 6, is equal to my slope, which is negative 2 sevenths times x minus the x that I chose, which is 5. Okay. And then I just need to solve this for y. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative 2 sevenths in. So I get y minus 6 is equal to negative 2 sevenths x. Now when I distribute it to negative 5, remember that's like negative 5 over 1. So I get positive 10 sevenths. And then I need to add 6 to both sides. When I add 6 to both sides, I get y is equal to negative 2 sevenths x Plus, now 10 sevenths and 6, I can't combine because they don't have the same denominator, right? 6 is the same as 6 over 1. So before I can move on, I need to get a common denominator here, which in this case, my common denominator uh, would be 7. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move up here because I ran out of some room. So I'm going to move up here and say y is equal to negative 2 sevenths x plus my first fraction, 10 sevenths, already has a denominator of 7. To get a denominator of 7 on the second one, I need to multiply on top and bottom by 7, which gives me 42 over 7. Okay, And now I can go ahead and combine these because they have the same denominator. So I end up with y is equal to negative 2 sevenths x plus 52 over 7. Okay, and We just leave it like that. We're not going to turn it into a decimal or a mixed number. Just leave it as an improper fraction. Okay, So this is the slope-intercept form of the line that goes through these two points. Um, same process, the only difference is um, 
i had to work out the slope formula to figure out what my slope was but then once you have the slope and a point we plug it in and solve exactly like we did the last two okay so there's two for y'all to try and then i'll go over them in just a minute all right so on the first one we have to find the slope first so again y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 you want to go ahead and just write that every single time because you're going to have to know it it's not going to be given to you on a test so make sure you know the slope formula once you calculate your slope you should get negative nine halves so we choose that slope and one of our points which i chose one five plug it into our point slope uh, formula when we simplify again we're going to end up with a common denominator issue um, we'll have to multiply on top and bottom um, of our second term that we moved over in order to get the same denominator and then once the denominators are the same we can combine them okay we should end up with y is equal to negative 9 halves x plus 19 over 2. okay the second one's a little bit different the second one um, if you notice they have the same y value okay whenever they have the same y value uh, that only happens if it's a horizontal line if you didn't notice that right away we could go ahead and calculate our slope which notice when we calculate our slope we get a zero slope so there again i could stop right there and say the only time we get a zero slope is if we have a horizontal line and remember horizontal lines go through y values so if it's a horizontal line all i need to know is what is that y value that it's going through y equals a number is what our equation will look like so i highlighted here in our two points the y value it's going through is three so the equation of this line is just y equals three again if you didn't notice that or you forgot about our horizontal lines having zero slopes and you want to go ahead and work it out we just plug zero in for our slope um, and our point slope method formula and we plug in one of the points whichever one you chose i did one three notice when our slope is zero the whole right hand side of the equation turns to just zero and then all i have to do is move my three over so you'll get the same answer either way i'd really like for you to be able to notice anytime you have a zero slope it's going to be a horizontal line and just to find the equation of uh, that y value okay the reason is here if we have a zero slope we can't actually plug it in but remember if we were to have a vertical line our slope is undefined and if we get an undefined slope there's no way to plug in the word undefined into our point slope formula and work it out so it's just really really good if you can notice zero slope is a horizontal line so it should be y equals a number undefined slope is a vertical line which is x equals a number and all you have to do is look at the points and see what that value is that's um, in both points okay all right, so I want to go ahead and show you an applied uh, problem. Uh, the table below illustrates the upward trend in America to choose cremation. Okay, and it, notice in part A it's saying, let the independent variable represent the number of years after 2005. So notice our x values here are the, the numbers of years past 2005. So we're not actually going to plug in 2005 when we use um, an ordered pair we're going to use zero or we're not going to plug in like 2008 we would just use three does that make sense okay and then our y is our percentage of death <clears throat> followed by cremation so what we want to do in part a is we want to model the data with a linear function that means we want to come up with something like y equals mx plus b that models this relationship between the year and the percentage of death followed by cremation Okay, so in order to come up with y equals mx plus b, again, I need to know my y-intercept and my slope, or I need to um, at least have two points so that I can find my slope. So um, depending on which point you pick, the answers vary a little bit because um, the y values are rounded. So for the sake of us all getting the same answer when we work this one out, I'm going to go ahead and pick 2005 and 2009 to choose my points from. When you work this one in your homework, you're more than welcome to choose whichever points you would like. Okay. Um, 2005 I chose because notice my x value is 0, my y value is 32.3. I always like to pick things that have zeros because that means less calculating for us. Okay, and then in 2009, I just picked that randomly, my ordered pair would be 4 and 36.9. So I'm going to go ahead and use these two points 
to figure out my slope. Remember, slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I do my second y value, which is 36.9 divided by, I'm sorry, minus my first y value, which is 32.3, and I'm going to divide that by uh, the difference in my x's. So my second x is 4 minus my first x is 0. So if I do 36.9 minus 32.3, I end up with 4.6 divided by 4, which gives me a slope of 1.15. Okay. So now I have my slope. So I'm going to use that. And then remember, in order to use our uh, point slope formula, we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Again, write that formula down over and over because you're going to need it for a test. It won't be given to you. Okay. I need the slope, which I found, and I need a point. Now, obviously, this would be the most uh, ideal point to use because it has a zero. So I'm going to use that one. So I do y minus the y that I chose, which is 32.3 is equal to the slope that I just figured out, which is 1.15 times x minus the x that I chose, which is 0. Notice x minus 0 in my parentheses is just x, and 115 times x is just 115x, right? And then I need to move my 32.3 to the other side. So I end up with y is equal to 1.15x plus 32.3. So now I have um, an equation or a linear function that represents this relationship, okay, where y is going to be the percentage of deaths followed by cremation and x is the number of years past 2005. So now that I have uh, this relationship modeled in an equation, part b asks, Using the function found in part A, estimate the percentage of deaths followed by cremation in 2013 and 2016. And I'm going to go ahead and just add in a little note here uh, to round to the nearest tenth. Okay. Uh, in my math lab, it'll tell you what to round to. I just didn't type it in here because I forgot. But I'm going to round to the nearest tenth because if you notice, if I scroll back up here, all of my y values only have one decimal place. So I'm assuming they got rounded to the nearest tenth. So that's what I'm going to do when I find my y values. Okay. So again, we're trying to figure out the percentages of death that will be followed by cremation in these two given years. So I'm using the equation that I figured out, which is y equals 1.15x plus 32.3. And now I just need to plug in the x values. So if I look at these years, the first one I want to look at is 2013. Now I don't plug in 2013. I plug in how many years since 2005 it's been. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2005, which leaves me with an eight year difference. So that means my x is eight. So if I were to plug in x equals 8 into my um, equation here, I get y is equal to 1.15 times 8 plus 32.3. Now when I multiply 1.15 times 8, <clears throat> excuse me, I get 9.2 plus 32.3, which gives me 41.5. Okay, it's already rounded. Well, it doesn't need to be rounded. It only has one decimal place, so it's in the tenths place. And then all I need to do is label it percent. So that means an estimated 41.5% of deaths are followed by cremation in the year 2013. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and do the same thing, but this time we're going to do it for 2016. So in the year 2016, I subtract 2005, which tells me that 11 years has passed. Okay. So if I plug in x equals 11 into my equation, I have y is equal to 1.15 times my x, which is 11, plus 32.3. Okay, 1.15 times 11 gives me 12.65 plus 32.3. And when I add those values together, I get 44.95. Now remember, I wanted to round to the nearest tenth, which is my first decimal place, which is my 9 here. Now, the number behind my 9 is a 5. The 5 is going to round the 9 up to a 10, which is going to change my 1's unit um, to a 5. So this one's going to be approximately 45%
of all deaths will be followed by cremation um, in the year 2016. Okay. All right. So that is the end of E19. So you should now be able to complete that homework assignment in my math lab. There's also a worksheet that goes with E19, which is located under the course materials tab of your my math lab under the sub tab labeled worksheets. Okay. If you can't find it, let me know. If you need any help, um, don't hesitate to holler. Okay. Good luck.